you know, from like the average Joe citizen, right, that, you know, goes to work, punches in and out, goes to grocery store, goes to church, what keeps, you know, laws for, laws for the lawless, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for the average person, there is that self-driven uh, discipline that there is a fear about getting arrested, now having this on your record, having a mugshot, like there's this fear of that the average Joe citizen that's their biggest fear, yeah. right? I mean, that's yeah. why, like, I mean, shoot, I get pulled over. I get that pucker factor, yeah. right? Like, oh, I'm about yeah. to get licks in, in school, like, yeah. when I was a kid, right? Like, you, you can't squeeze out a wet fart, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's, it just makes you nervous, right? But then other people, you know, they're just habitual offenders, yeah. right? So, to them, going to jail is no big deal. I've probably seen their homies, yeah. right? Yeah, it could be. So, there, in, in an absence of fear, you have an absence of consequence. Mm -hmm. With an absence of consequence, it's just free reign. Yeah. I mean, from a, a naivety, for me, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, skin color, upbringing, m middle class, like I have a lot of privilege, Yeah. right? Uh -huh. Let's just call it what it is. Uh, yeah. Other people say it's, uh, it's social driven, it's environmentally driven. Uh, other people say it's the fault of the system. I look at it as choice. I mean, I've seen people that have come from horrible childhoods, multiple different races, but found a way. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. So I, I have a hard time empathizing with because it's your environment, right? When I mean, how many movies are made about people that came out of horrible situations and made something of themselves, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you're an example of that, yeah. regardless of skin color. Yeah. But it, it you took you you whatever lesson you learned or whatever moment you just kind of had like thump on the head, going, "What am I doing?" Right? And I don't like where this is headed. I need to change something, right? Yeah. Or if it was pressure from family, but I j I just. It, what is a better way to reform people that are habitually criminal? Stiffer penalties? That's a, that's a big Public question. hangings? Yeah. I mean, like... I mean, you could get, like, the Middle East and start chopping off some fingers and hands and stuff. That's I mean, legit. You know, that I happens. Mean, like public, oh, that's for sure. No, I get it. Like, to I mean, this if you, day, you that go, happens. You go down to the square down here and we, you know, hang eight people that, you know committed some, you know, heinous felonies in, in Montgomery County, I, I'd imagine <laughs> everybody would be like, holy shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, like, whoa, like, you know, like, but I mean, you know, I don't know, MD. I mean, that's, I mean, know, just, I mean, like, know, I preach, I, I had the, you know, in 12 step programs, like in Alcoholics Anonymous, like I sobered up in, I mean, part of your 12 steps carrying the message. I mean, you know, when I'm, was in the office regularly, I could carry that message all day long. You know what I'm saying? Because like I told you, most everybody that's in jail has a drug or alcohol addiction of some type, you know what I'm saying? Or was under the influence, you know? And that's at their best time. You know, I've, I've been blessed enough to, you know, put a hand out to a number of people that have changed their lives, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily because it was anything I said that was special, but because they were at that, that point in their life where they're like, yeah, I'm done, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't want this life anymore. I'm tired of this life. And, you know, they made a change, whether it was AA or Jesus or church or whatever they chose, you know what I'm saying? They found some, some way out, but, um, you know, some people too, I mean, they go to prison for that second or third time and they're like, you know, this is terrible. You know, I want to go to sleep next to my wife and eat a steak and play with my kid and, you know what I'm saying? Ride my motorcycle and, you know, I don't want to go to jail no more. You know what I'm saying? And they, they make that decision to, you know, stop doing drugs or alcohol, you know, or they'll stop doing drugs and start maybe just drinking, you know, <laughs> sometimes that swap's not real successful, but, um, especially if you it, have it's still addiction. a bandaid. Yeah. If you still have the addiction issue, I mean, like, you know, it could be, you know, if it felt good to slam your hand in the door, you know what I'm saying? You'd, you know, doing it all the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you're an addict, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, so you can, yeah. you know, stop doing, you know, cocaine and start smoking weed and abuse that, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, stop drinking wine and you know, start drinking beer and abuse that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you got mm -hmm. that ism that they talk about them. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know the answer to that, you know, on the reform side of things. Um, now I've watched you, know. you on your social uh, which I love the fact you became more public when you're out there doing a hunt, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're, you're hunting down a skip, right? Uh, I think that's the right terminology. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I did a little research. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Chasing but, bad guys. But, yeah. um, you, you, uh, you, you, I mean, you're this, you're this intimidating guy. Like you walk in, how tall are you? Like six, six two. Six two. Yeah. You got this bald head, beard. You got this deep voice. Like it's damn near Moses, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, a little, yeah. little scary, <laughs> right? I, you know, I, I wouldn't want to meet you in a dark yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would not want that, man. <laughs> I hope I would get a text. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Why don't you just come turn yourself in? And I, <laughs> yeah. I, I was just talking, I was texting with the fugitive earlier. 
that I'm actually friends with his family and he's on the run and we were talking smack to each other. Like before the holidays, I was all into it. I was like, I'm gonna get you, motherfucker. And we were just like, you know. You're texting this I guy. I was texting this guy, you know. Does he have an iPhone? Yeah. Can he track his know, iPhone? Yeah, he, he might have. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I didn't think about that because I'm friends with his wife. Damn, I just wa- tell yeah. secret? <laughs> now my wife and and uh, and I are friends with this this guy's you know, wife, and he's addicted to drugs, man, and that's his problem. You know, what I'm saying that's why he's kind of on the lam right now. And uh, you know, I was having fun with it before the holidays, but then I got wrapped all up in this this business transition I'm going through. Uh, and I was like, kind of lost interest in it. And he texted me this morning and was talking some trash, bringing up some stuff I texted, you know, before the holidays when I was all right. He's on up. the run and he's taunting. He, well, I was talking mad trash to him. And then, you know, so he started being like, yeah, made the best man win. I was like, kind of getting a little riled up. And I was like, see, I don't have time to mess with this kid. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know. Because what I'll do is I'll get the streets against this them. Is crazy. Yeah, no, I'll I'll turn the streets against them because I've got connections with all the biggest heavy hitters on the streets. You know what I'm saying? Because I handle, um, you know, the biggest meth dealers. You know what I'm saying? Or crack cocaine dealers or these you know different uh, you know guys that run with these certain groups of people, whether it be gang related or whatever. I've, I've I've helped these people out for 20 years. You know what I'm saying? So I have confidential informants on the streets. And so just depending on who I'm looking for, I'll go to those people and let them know, hey, I need so-and-so, or things are about to start getting real messy, basically. You know what I'm saying? Like, so y'all can go ahead and bring them to me, and we'll just handle this deal up. No big deal. Boom, boom, boom. Or I'm going to start hitting houses with law enforcement, and we're going to start taking people to jail, and that may be you or your friends or your family. So I'm just letting you know, bring me so-and-so. And so a lot of times they'll, they'll kind of brush me off. So you leverage while. fear. You, lever, you I mean, leverage kinda, a fear I mean, consequence. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because it's just fact. Like, bro, I'm going to be out here in your area, and I'm going to start, and this guy's affiliated to you and your people. So I'm going to start picking off your people, and maybe you, you know what I'm saying? I'm not threatening you, but I'm just saying I'm going to be coming out here, and we're going to be hitting these houses with law enforcement. If there's drugs or there's stolen cars and that kind of stuff, we're going to start taking people to jail. And they'll sometimes be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then, you know, they'll kind of brush me off. And then we start smashing houses. And people start going to jail. And, like, real quick, these, you know, people that are affiliated this is pretty fascinating. highly. fascinating. Yeah, they start calling. <laughs> and they're like, oh, oh, you know, like, one, they need to bond those people out of jail that just got arrested. And then, yeah. two, you know, they're like, oh, okay, yeah. You needed who again? I'm like, yeah, that's, I need this person. And then. Normally, are they hoping for the like a handout? To provide, not particularly, because I already take care of those people. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But they kind of it's like a fair weather friend or something. Like we're mm. we're you know scratch my back, I'll scratch yeah, your yeah, you know. But then it, it, sometimes they're kind of slow. But you better get that spot on mine. Yeah, though, right? but yeah, because <laughs> and, they, and I mean that's exactly like with this particular guy. I mean the guys I was reaching out to, some of their close people started going to jail, and they got mad because so I kind of figured the streets would end up bringing me back this fugitive, but. You know, some of these guys get lucky, and they'll just, they somehow just kind of weave in and out. They leave right before we get there, and they, they, they just somehow have this blind luck. And this guy happens to be one of them, and I just don't have time for him right now. Um, I'll get geared back up and get riled back up. I need to kind of get through this this new business transition I'm going through and this buyout. But uh, The business of being a bounty hunter. Yeah, the business behind banging banging doors. And- now, I will say there, uh, you were on a stakeout somewhere what a couple months ago three months ago because i you know i watch you on social media mm-hmm. i watch and you were in some dump doing a stakeout with some guy like this place like roach infested you were doing a walkthrough oh, we were in that apartment doing surveillance out of an apartment yeah yeah because yeah. we'll, yeah. we'll go to the apartment <laughs> management and get a key normally for that apartment where the fugitive is at mm. and then if we go in and they're not there then a lot of times we'll ask for like an apartment you know, across from it or literally sometimes, sometimes you go up the stairs and like their doors over here and we'll get the apartment right across and we'll be in like that peephole for like 10 hours a day looking <laughs> through the peephole. <laughs> and so, uh, I like having an apartment normally across where we can just kind of sit with our lawn chairs with the blinds open you know, <laughs> to see if they come that looking through uh, that, that fish eye for like 10 hours can kind of mess you up a little yeah. bit. You know, so let me tell my rookie guys to do that, but, uh, but yeah, we'll do that. And then some of them are nasty. You know what I'm saying? Some of the hotel, you know, the hotels uh-huh. or apartments that we're in are uh-huh. pretty, pretty funky. Straight up. Is there a thrill literally when you've got to go hunt a man down? Is there like some inherent, like, I don't, I, I think of a, I think of a bounty hunter and I think of the movie Raising Arizona. Remember that with Nicolas yeah. Cage? Yeah. And uh, they called uh, Leonard Smalls. And, uh, and he said, it was, I mean, Hell's Angel guy just 
just looked like he was just dripping testosterone, like just oozing from every pore. Looked like you could literally smell him through the TV. And uh, he puts his boot up on the on the desk, and uh, he goes, "My friends call me Lenny, but I ain't got no friends, <laughs> right?" I mean, he just looked like hell on on two feet, oh, right? Like the gosh. last guy you ever want to see walk up. Uh, but that that's always the 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 idea of like a bounty hunter, right? Or or you think of like the old Western days, right? You yeah. know, hunt a man down. Bounty, you know, five hundred dollar bounty or something like that. Not a but. dude in a pink shirt that pulled up in an infinity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I can still get dirty. I got my you gear got on the bo- car, bro. We got I mean, bougie mountain. Uh-huh. That's what we got. <laughs> Cartier wristwatch. That's you okay. know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, my in style boots. That's the spoils of hunting men down, right? <laughs> I mean, it can be. Uh-huh. Yeah, but it. But it I is, mean, there's big. I mean, like there's times where you know, you know. I mean, I think we closed the case out, made like nine or ten grand on one. You get guy. your mic a little bit closer. Yeah, we, we, we had like nine or ten thousand dollars. Yeah, let me, is that good? A little better? Yeah, yeah we did. Um, I mean, some cases pay out big, you know. I mean, you can make ten thousand dollars, you know. So, so explain me how the case. how the, the, the bail process works and then why you actually end up hunting a, a person down and then how you actually get paid. Yeah, so uh, so if like somebody's got like a million dollar bond, right? Well, yeah, well, yeah, you don't see those very often. Right. But let's say a hundred thousand dollar bond, you do occasionally see those. Um, so a hundred thousand dollar bond, we charge ten percent to pick the person up, so ten thousand dollars. So if somebody gets and arrested, so, whatever the crime is, the bond, the judge says hundred thousand dollar or hundred thousand dollar bond, right? Yeah. To get out of jail, they don't pay a hundred grand. They do Granny's not. not leveraging their mortgage to 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 get a hundred grand. Yeah, I mean, depending on the state, every state and every county has its own laws. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So some laws there is zero commercial bail. You know, you do the bond at the jail. Your mom or dad would take the money to the jail. The ten percent, ten percent is kind of the average oh, ten, across okay. the board. So, okay. excuse me. <clears throat> so the way that like a bail bondsman works is we have an allotment of money that we write with here in in each county. You have to be licensed in each individual county if you want to write bail in it here okay. in the state of Texas. Was there two hundred and fifty two counties or how many counties are there in the state? You know. Uh, two, that sounds about right. Two, yeah, yeah, I think it's two, two fifty something. I can't remember. Jason, but, you can Google it. Yeah, he's all getting get his Google on. <laughs> but anyways, you have to be li- in Texas. You have to be licensed in in whatever county you do bail in. Okay. So, and you can write on property or you can write with insurance. Uh, we had built our business right on a lot of property where we put up the the the, pr- the cash or we put up the the property like commercial real estate that we own to write on. So let's say you put up a fifty thousand dollars CD in Montgomery County. That would give you five hundred thousand dollars with the bill to write on. So you so that, kind of a ten coffer. times multiplier. That's your yeah. Or so okay. we put up a, a hundred thousand dollar piece of property, like a residential, uh, residential or commercial piece of property. Two hundred fifty four. Yeah, two hundred fifty four. <laughs> I was cost two off. Uh, you know, let's say we put up a hundred thousand dollar piece of commercial property. That would give us ten times a million dollars worth of bail to write. So, like, if you came in with that five thousand dollar DWI or whatever. And your mom or your wife or whatever doesn't have the five thousand dollars, then what we do is we'll put the money up after we interview you normally or interview whoever's coming to co-sign, you know, your mom or who, wife or dad or whoever's coming to get you out of jail. So we'll normally have an interview with one of the two, either. Who am I going to go to yeah. first when you try to skip? You, well, that's a good point. Well, a lot of times when I'm <laughs> when I'm writing a bond, I mean, if I'm if I'm writing a bond, a lot of times I'm writing it as if that person's going to miss. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, not judging the person. By male well, or female or job. ethnicity <laughs> or whatever, like I'm, in, I'm kind of interviewing. I'm like, all right, can I find this person? Yeah. I mean, have you been in Montgomery County ten months or ten years or where'd you work? How long have you worked there? Where'd you work before? I mean, like I'm kind of doing the whole interview process. So, so I, I wager that I'm like, okay, well, cool, I'm, I'm good. You, you know, you've been here ten years and been at your job for two and been married for five and, you know, okay, mm-hmm. cool. I'll put my five grand up and I charge you. Ten percent, five hundred bucks. That's why I would charge you to get out of. And then a lot of times, I can even do a payment plan on that. So like, if your wife's like, "Man, you know, I just paid the mortgage and the car note and the kids' private school." I mean, that's not the normal situation I'm running into. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, "Cool, you know, how much do you have?" Well, cool, I got two hundred bucks. Cool, bring me your two hundred. You know. So that that was the other thing too with a lot of this bail reform. Not to go too far back is that you know as bondsmen we've always offered these people these indigent or these poor people payment arrangements. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not like you know the, like I, like I went back and told you earlier the jail's not full of five hundred dollar bonds. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, people, we're going to make that work for that family member. Hey, bring us your hundred bucks. We'll get, you know, whoever, Billy Bob out, whatever the person's name is, Sally, whatever. So anyway, so on the bail side, so we do the bond. Your wife brings in the 500 bucks. We get you out of jail. You have court set for February 1st. 
And that's basically our job as a bondsman. We, you've hired us to basically keep you notified at court dates, make sure you're checking in weekly by phone. We're kind of adult babysitters, right? Make sure so, you show up for court. Yeah, so then you miss court on February 1st, and then that's where bounty hunting comes in. Um, you know, not all bail bond companies have in-house bounty hunters. We do. Okay. Okay. I also have another business that runs warrants and does bounty hunting for other bail bond companies. So I do in-house warrants for my companies with my bounty hunt team. And then we have Texas Bounty Investigations that does outside warrants for other companies in the state of Texas or nationwide or in Mexico. And so basically that's where that comes in. So February 1st, you miss, then that's when the file gets brought to me and my guys. And we start looking, oh, okay, let's see. Okay. He works here. This is where he drives. You know, I've got all these database, you know. Programs. So what's the financial risk here when somebody doesn't show up for court? Uh, are, are you, you going to have to pay that five grand? Yes, that, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. The way that that works in the state of Texas is we have six months on misdemeanors before we have to physically write a check for $5,000. So 100, course, 180 days, six months on misdemeanors, uh, 270 days, nine months on mm -hmm. felonies. Okay. So from that day you miss on February 1st, we've got till... Whatever what would that be if we were doing a felony? That'd be November first. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Before we physically had to write a check for five thousand dollars. Okay. So it's kind of monopoly money. You know, I was telling right. you we've got these pieces of property or, or light or, or CDs put up at the county. They take five grand off. We get you out of jail. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You miss court. Then if I don't find you in nine months, then I have to physically write that check for five grand. Okay. But if I arrest you within that nine month period, then I my five grand just goes back in the the coffer there okay. at the jail and okay. you go back to jail and the case is done. So then how, how as a bail bonds company, do you actually make money? So the 10% that charge you the 500 bucks to get out. Okay. But gotcha. I'm not making any money. If you miss on February 1st and I have to go hire a bounty hunter and then that's the fee of bounty hunter charges too is 10%. Mm. So you kind of made 500, picked the bad person to write a bond on cause you didn't interview them yep. correctly. And then you had to pay, you know, bail, bounty hunter X Five hundred dollars to pick the person up, but it's mm -hmm. better than five grand. Mm -hmm. You know True. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so that's kind of how that system works. So being a, being an in house, but then you're also contracted out to where you'll get ten percent for if somebody doesn't have a, a bounty hunter mm -hmm. in their uh, in their bail bonds business. So they're going to pay you that ten percent. I mean, can just anybody get into bail and then say, "Hey, I'd, I'll go hunt your guy down for ten percent"? No, you have to be. We're licensed. You're a licensed private investigator in the okay. state of Texas. That's how bounty hunting works. Okay. So, in order to, I've got, I've got licensing under Department of Public Safety. So, okay. So there's a Texas Rangers, mm -hmm. DPS, and then there's private security. So, which you're, which is a private. I'm a, I'm a licensed private investigator in the state of Texas. Okay, that's what a bounty hunter is mm -hmm. here. So that's how my licensing is. And there's, a, I mean, FBI background check and all kinds of stuff that I have to do to be licensed with the state as a private investigator. Yeah, you right. just can't, you can't have, um, you know, too extensive of a cr criminal record. To, well, to that it. was my next that, question. That, that, I mean, like, I did, I, I did get in, in trouble. That, that's why, like, I've been around bail and bounty for a long time, but I have only been legally licensed as a bounty hunter or private investigator for, like, the last 12 years. Mm. Because I I got in trouble in uh, 1999. Really? Uh -huh. I decided to go across the United States border and pick up some pharmaceuticals down in Mexico. Got jammed up <laughs> coming back across <laughs> the border. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I told you, man. I mean, like I was a full blown, you know, addict alcoholic. You know, from you know the, my freshman year in high school. You know what I'm saying? Like as soon as I put that stuff in my body, I was like. Pow! How it, the so, best thing ever, you know what I'm saying? So that said, so that getting in trouble, you know what I'm saying? Those felony charges, by the grace of God, my mommy and daddy had money to hire me a proper attorney and, and fight my case to where I, I didn't become a convicted felon. Mm -hmm. I got to do a probation type deal called deferred adjudication. Yep. I completed that and, and then it fell off my record. Mm -hmm. Luke, Luke says I, I was arrested for that, but not convicted.